All right. Will it let you share without being the host or do I need to make you the host? Screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. All right. Here we go. There you go, ma'am. Okay. All right. Before I share my screen, um, I did, I talked with Lindsay earlier and I triple checked actually with my accountant um, because I was talking to um, Chrissy about claiming her, um, uh, her business expenses. And um, I just wanted to clarify because I did talk to a CPA today and she clarified with me. Um, so this is straight coming from her mouth. I wrote it down word for word. Um, so even if you did not make $600 at like the whole year, um, whether you were super close or you were, were not even close at all, um, they always recommend that you claim all of your write-offs. Um, so if you have a business income, even if it's under 600 with no 1099, you still want to claim all of your expenses because you would then already have that Schedule C set up in your tax system every year, and the IRS is going to look for it. Um, so if there's no 1099, you still want to do it. And the loss will just end up coming off of your regular income instead of the business income. And you possibly might even get a bigger refund or lower what you owe. So it works for your benefit anyway. Okay. So um, this is, man, this is going to be my seventh year claiming taxes for Beachbody. That sounds crazy. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> um, I have a sheet that I use in Google Sheets. Um, I created it myself, so it is nothing super fancy, but um, it works. So um, this is my 2019 um, deduction sheet here. And um, in fact, let me open... No, that is not what I wanted to open first. So way back in the day, we were part of a team called the Sweet Elite, which technically really no longer exists. Um, and um, the head of that team was formerly an accountant, and she was very informative on all this stuff, which is basically how I know all this stuff. Um, and this was a sheet that she had shared with us that first year um, that I was coaching. So I can... Uh, I, I don't know if it's uploaded in our um, Google Drive or not. I feel like I did upload it at one point. If it's not there, I'll put it there. And if it is, it should be there. It just basically goes through all the things you are allowed to write off with or without that $600. Um, so a lot of these I don't do um, either because I don't have them or I just don't do them, but legally you are allowed to do all of them. Um, so mileage is a big thing. Um, I actually, that's something I lack in big time. Um, I just am terrible at remembering, um, home office. That's one of the big things. And I'll go over that one. Um, telephone expenses. I do that as well. Um, it says trade show exhibition and or attendance, um, travel expenses. So, Obviously, none of us have really traveled much this last year, but um, if we had gone to Summit or if you've traveled for any like anything team related or going to meet someone that was on the team, um, all expenses, including um, gas and even including like um, dinners and meals that you had would all uh, fall under that. Education, any personal development books and uh, audibles that you buy, podcasts that you purchase and listen to. Um, try to think, uh, entertainment, petty cash and tips. So just random cash that maybe you send to other coaches or to other, uh, customers for the business, um, like through PayPal or Venmo, um, any advertising you might do. Um, a lot of us used to do this like way back in the day when we had like our own Facebook pages, um, and we did like Facebook ads and stuff. Um, but I have made, um, Oh, not credit cards, business cards in the past. And that would fall under that. Um, so if, you, if that's something you do, you could use it for that. Um, any gifts that you give to clients or other coaches, um, any other outside help. So if you, ha I would assume like a virtual assistant would probably fall under that. Um, I know a couple of you do things like that. Um, office supplies, uh, office equipment, 
uh, like a new computer or a new uh, printer, like all of these things that help you with your business at home, you can claim your mortgage interest, uh, software that you buy. So if you use Quicken or QuickBooks or anything like that to help track your expenses, claim that. Um, so this is all on here. I'm not going to go through all of it because you all know how to read and you can do that all by yourself. So <laughs> I am going to go through though everything that I claim and kind of go through some things that maybe you wouldn't think of. Um, I'm not going to upload my personal sheet on so you can see all of my expenses, but I did create a template, a blank one. I hope that is not it. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, that I will gladly share if you wanted to use it. It just has all the categories. Um, I set it up so the, uh-oh, hold on. My child is awake and is never awake at this time. What do you need, Bubba? What? You want the door open? Are you okay? Okay. My kid never wakes up. Hold on. Sorry, literally out of both of my children. Okay, I had, now have three children, but my two children that go to sleep by themselves, um, that is not the one that normally gets up. So that was it. <laughs> um, and they never care about the door. So I don't know. Anyways, so um, I will upload this um, in case any of you want to use it. Um, if you have not claimed anything ever in the past, do it. I know it's a big hassle, especially someone like me that doesn't um, keep up with it during the year. And I end up doing the whole freaking darn thing when it's time, which is really not ideal. But um, like I said, I use the box next to total. I put in the, um, if you look up here, it says equals sum. I put in the uh, correct, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, formula. Um, so that way it sums it up for me and I don't have to do it with a calculator. Um, I do that in every total box. So I highly recommend you do that if you do a spreadsheet like this. Um, so let me just walk you through mine. Um, here's some office supplies. So like I bought a new MacBook last year in 2009 or 2018. Um, so 2008, no, 19, we're in 21, sorry, 2019. So I had put that expense on there. Um, the year before I bought myself a new printer that was on there, uh, a planner, envelopes, um, even something, I think, is it on there? No, that would be mail. So any like pens, a lot of that stuff I also can claim for my teacher expenses. So like I kind of wiggle around between both of them, but I know a lot of you aren't teachers. So um, anything like just throw it in there. Cause a lot of the stuff that it, pens and pencils and stuff that I buy ends up being for school and not really for home. Um, any coach gifts. So we didn't really have summit this year. Um, so that kind of eliminated coach gifts in that regard. But if you bought any gifts for your coaches or customer or customers for Christmas or something um, you can, what is it, $25 or under, you can um, write off, Lindsay, is that right? Doesn't have to be under $25. Per coach, I think. I think coach. under, I think under 50, but I will double check, but I'm pretty I, sure it's under 50 per coach. If it doesn't have, um, like however, if it has our team logo on it, you can do it doesn't matter, right? Yep. Cause then it's considered um, wear and share right. type stuff. Yeah like advertising almost. Right. Okay. So yeah. So like I had gotten some fancy cups for Chrissy and Mindy. Um, 
And then I bought a start today journal for two people. So like stuff like that, that wouldn't have our logo on it. Um, I claim under there and then I have a wear and share option over otherwise too. customer appreciation. So like, um, if you do a give back at all, Oh my gosh, what? It is bedtime. You cannot go downstairs, Bubba. Grayson, you need to go to sleep. Oh my God. This never happens. This is my life. You're fine, girl. We know we're mamas too. Grayson, go to bed, please. Daddy's going to come up. Yeah, mommy's, mommy's on a call. Daddy's going to come up and put you to bed. You cannot go downstairs. It is bedtime. Go in your bed, please. <clears throat> go. You need to go to sleep. Okay. So, um, customer appreciation, like if you're giving a target gift card, Amazon gift card, cash back, whatever, we did this a lot when the, um, uh, when we didn't have bod and it was, you know, basically you're getting the DVD for free. We did those a lot, but now we just do them with like flash with uh, flash sales and stuff like that. So if you ever gave any gift backs in that way, that would go under there. There's the advertising family photos. That was something Lindsay taught me the last year or two, all family photos you can put under there because more than likely you are using them to help with your business on social media. So um, I got family photos done three times this year. So all three of them are gonna fall on there because I use them on social media. Actually two times, I guess one of them was in January. Um, and then there's mail, that's all of your postage. Um, and I guess even, well, no, that'd be office supplies if you buy envelopes and stuff. So yeah, all your postage would go on there. Um, education, that's the PD books. If you buy podcasts, anything like that, the wear and share is if you're buying anything, maybe Alyssa Homewood made you something with our logo on it. Um, we don't have summit clothing or anything like that this year. If you bought any coach gifts with it on it, that would go on there. Now, this is one of my bigger columns, the product of the product, because if you are like me or most coaches, you buy a lot from Beachbody because Beachbody sells amazing things. So your Shakeology, your beach bars, your performance line, um, energize, all of it, all of your completion packs, it's all going on there. Um, I put dates next to everything. I don't know um, what's necessarily needed for dates. You technically should have receipts for everything. Um, I save my receipts when they're like bought at a store, I put receipts in a folder in my mailbox um, on my email. And I also um, put, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Why is he up again? Oh my God, this is, I'm, I swear, this kid never gets up. <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna interrupt you for a minute just so that it's on the recording. Your bank statement will suffice as well. Like I don't keep receipts for anything because I just use my, I have one card that is the card all my beach body money goes into and all my beach body expenses come out of. And, um, I just use that to do everything and that will hold up too. If you don't want to keep up with receipts. You're, you're absolutely right. And, um, I know, there were a couple coaches a couple years back that didn't have a card that specified just for Beachbody and they would like highlight on there. Not all accountants are okay with that um, simply because it's extra work for them. So if it, they are okay with it, they might charge you extra for the extra work. But if you do something like Lindsay and you have a separate card completely, that would definitely work. So what I do for my accountant is I still make the spreadsheet just like what you have up in front of us. But if they ever audited me, it would all be from the one card. So I just felt, felt like right. it was a little easier. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I put literally everything on there, collagen, um, MM100, like six weeks of the work, digital unlocking, like everything that I buy from Beachbody goes under there. And it's pretty amazing how much you end up spending. Look, $3,600 I spent on Beachbody in 2019. Um, business meals and entertaining. So um, like I had dinner with Mindy in 2019. Um, I had lunch on the way to Indiana. Um, all this stuff we did in Summit went under there. Travel and auto maintenance. So technically you can claim any maintenance you do to your car and things like that. I'm not too picky and I don't put everything on there. If it's related to Beachbody is what I put on there. So like I went on, I drove to uh, visit Lindsay at the end of 2019 and I put all of my expenses on there because Lindsay's my coach. She is my friend, but she is my coach and you're allowed to do that. Um, I put the gas on there. I put indie Summit stuff on there, the parking, um, the hotel deposit, and then the home office. So I was renting in 2019. Um, so I have all of my rent on there. You are, you can also put your mortgage on there. They are not going to take all of the expenses hundred percent. They are going to take a small percentage of it based on the square footage of your home compared to the square footage of your home office. So um, I put my rent, my business fees and my utilities all under home office. Um, I have, bur I lived in my town's borough and that included um, electric, gas, trash, garbage, water, like it was all lumped into one. So that's why it just says utilities and it's not separate. Now that I live outside of that, I'm going to have all of those separate because they're all separate bills. So um, also it's important to remember that because we're a fitness business, your, your groceries cannot ever be mm. a write off. However, your workout space can, as long as it's not technically used for anything else. So if they were ever to audit you, you would have to prove that your workout space is just used for working out and your office space is just used for office work. Right. But that would be easy to prove and you can write off both. Yes, that is absolutely right. Yep. Um, so on my sheet for my accountant, right there is the square footage of the house that I lived in when I, the house I was renting, it was about 1500 square feet. And then I measured the home office area and it was about 156 square feet. So she takes a percentage of that and takes the percentage of the home office expenses because obviously you're not using your entire house as your office. So you can't claim all of those numbers hundred percent. Um, petty cash tips. So, um, I bought daily sunshine samples from Lindsay, I believe was what that was uh, a zoom account. So stuff that I like paid other people through like PayPal and stuff and PayPal like keeps record of all your receipts and stuff. And I always put in my notes when I send people money, what it's for. So I remember. Um, so if that's something you're not doing, that is something you can do. So you can think about that. Um, Telephone and communications. You can claim your cell phone and your internet. You want to do that because those are like your lifeline of this business. You are mainly doing your business from your phone a lot of the time, especially when you're on the go and even from your computer, which uses your wireless internet if you're not hooked up to a desktop. Um, and again, they're going to, I think they take the percentage of that as well. Um, because at least the internet they do, um, because you're obviously not using the internet in your whole house. I'm pretty positive that's something they take a percentage for, but I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, you are allowed to claim both of those. So, um, and look, you spend a lot of money on internet and on your phone for the year. And obviously, um, and so for me, I have mine and my husband's business um, combined. When we weren't married, I made two separate spread spreadsheets because we did not file together. But since we are married, we filed it together, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I have my Verizon wireless bill on there, and it is mine and his, but I'm claiming both of ours anyway. So if you have a family account and all of the people on your account are not Beachbody coaches, you cannot 
put that whole number on there. You can only put your cell phone bill on there or yours and your husband's on there or whatever um, because you can't claim your kids' phones. Sorry, <laughs> that would be nice. But <laughs> um, so just make sure you keep a uh, note of that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I feel like I'm flying through it, but. Um, well, I, I was going to say something. I just saw this. I just gave up TikTok for Lent, so I haven't seen it recently. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was spending way too much time on TikTok. Um, but I just saw this on TikTok before I gave it up. And it said there was this guy who apparently is a business owner and he has children. And I don't know how the, how old they have to be in order to do this, but he paid them $12,000 a year. Apparently that's like the max you can pay your child when you own your own business. And he paid them $12,000 a year. He just had to prove that like they were doing things for his business that warranted them being paid. And then he was then able to write off the fact that he was paying them, that they were employees. He was able to write off their phones, their whatever, like anything that would be a business expense. So that's something to look into if that's something that you have children old enough to do. I don't believe either of my children are old enough to do that right now. And neither one of them have cell phones anyway, but something to think about. Like if you can say I'm paying my child this amount of money to shred papers and to, Open I don't now. know, clean, clean my yoga mat. Like literally like there's a lot of options in our business for what we could pay them to do. That's something to think about. That's crazy. Yeah. It's something to ask your accountant about if you are using one. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you that don't use an accountant, I give you props because I'm always afraid I'm going to mess it up. I agree. I feel personally, if you are a small business owner, it is worth it to pay someone to do your taxes simply for the reason if you were ever audited and something was wrong, it would never fall back on you. It would always fall back on them. Hundred percent agree. Yep, and I don't know enough to feel confident in doing that. Um, before Beachbody, I never even did my own. For one or two years, I did it through H and R Block, where I actually went to H and R Block and they did it for me because I didn't even trust myself doing it on my computer. And then prior to that, my ex husband did it, but he was very familiar with it. So um, I'm just not confident enough to do all of this, let alone do the simple basics of taxes. So um, yeah, if you are claiming for your small business, I highly recommend an accountant. Um, they know the ins and outs. And if they don't know the ins and outs, you might want to find an accountant that is very familiar with small businesses slash network marketers. Um, that was always advised to me in the early on as well. Um, thankfully, both CPAs that I've used were very familiar with it. And if they weren't, and I gave them a little bit of info and they looked it up, then they were good to go. So I think that's all I got, unless I missed anything, which I don't think I did. <sighs> yeah, I don't think I missed anything. Unless no, I really think this is the way to go. Like I, every year it takes me hours to go through, like I have devoted myself tomorrow night. This is what I'm doing. I'm getting my taxes done. Tomorrow night, I will go through all of my bank statements, all of my Amazon purchases, PayPal, Venmo, all that. It'll take me. It takes a, a while. A, a good two, three hours. If you don't but, do it month by month, which you probably should, but here I am. I know. I, I always say I'm going to, and I never do. And so what I end up doing is I end up sitting down, going through it all at one time. It does take me a couple hours. But then I bring this to my person and she has my taxes done. Oh, so fast. 48 hours later. So yep. that's my goal to get done tomorrow. Um, again, I'm going to reiterate what Jackie said. Do I personally use somebody? Because again, I know that there are programs you can plug in stuff, but I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. So I feel like I would make a mistake. And if I did, 
then I want someone else to have my back. And I will say this. So last year was my first year filing as a single person since um, becoming a beach body coach. It was also my first year where I got a return. Like I actually got money back from the federal government. Nice. Whereas before I always had to pay in. And with the state, I always had to pay in. With the state last year, I think I paid in maybe 200, I don't even know if it was $200, but with the federal government, I got a refund. And I don't know if it was because I was single or it was because of the person I used to do my taxes. But I really think there's a lot of value there. Like there were things that she was like, can you show me this? And when I showed it to her, she got me more of a discount. Oh, For yes. example, just simply being a teacher, she was like, I know that you have spent this amount of money on your classroom because all teachers spend this amount of money on your classroom. I'm going to give you this right off. And I was like, cool deal. Now, had I been audited, I would have had to prove it, but I'm sure I could have found pens, pencils, paper, all that stuff. So keep, take that into consideration. I do think, I think I paid her like $250, but I ended up getting almost a thousand dollars back. So I do think it's worth it. Yeah. Unfortunately, my CPA is like four something, um, which is not something I wanted to spend because I used to only spend about 200, but she does all of it and she does it right. And I get, right. I get. Back. That's also a tax write off for this year. I mean, it like, it all works out. That's a business expense. Is it really? Yeah. You paying someone to do your taxes is a business expense. I have never put that on there. Yep. I've not, I honestly never even knew what I was paying because I didn't do our taxes. I just filled out, I made, I made the spreadsheet and then gave it to my ex-husband and he went and took care of it. Right. Um, but when I did it all myself, I ended up getting way more money. And I don't know, I don't know if it was because I was single or if it was because they were done the way they were supposed to be done. I don't know exactly why it worked out different, but yeah. So what I, what I paid her in 2020 to do my taxes for 2019 is now a 2021 tax write-off. So where does that go? Like where? It would go under a business expense. I have an accountant because I have a business. If I didn't have a business, I would just use my, my credit union and my credit union would be free for me. That's true. I never thought of that. And I actually paid more last year because of, um, we sold, uh, an investment property that yeah. we had. Yep. By our house. Absolutely. Yeah. BPA expense. Good to know. I will have to put that on there. Every little bit counts. Yes, it does. It really does. I know they're like pretty stickler about like donation and stuff now, but I know that used to be a big one um, because people will get rid of their clothes and stuff all the time. But I know, I think they've really wired it down. Um, and stuff it's almost you- impossible to write that stuff off now. I think you have to have 10% of your annual income as a write off for donations now. I don't know why it changed, but every time I go now, I just tell them, don't even bother giving me a receipt because there's no way I'm going to donate $6,000 worth of stuff. Right. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. (sighs) Well, thanks girl. This was really helpful. I think honestly the spreadsheet is the biggest thing when you're filing taxes. And you know, like I said, like I wish I had the mentality to do it every month. It would make this time of year so much easier. (laughs) You know, sometimes I also think just sitting down and doing it all at once is, it takes a lot of time, but at least I didn't waste a little bit of time every month. I don't know. That's true. That's true. At least one thing I am on the ball of this year that I haven't been the last several years is I actually have most of my papers filed from last year. Whereas I'm normally trying to file a whole year's worth of stuff and do my taxes at the same time. That takes a really long time. I feel you. I am the worst at this, which is again, uh, why I hire an accountant. <laughs> yeah, 
it takes so freaking long. Yeah, oh it my I'm like, man, you know, if I could just put the paper in the stupid folder that I created, this would save so much time. Yeah. <laughs> and just keep in mind, like Jackie shared, you know, she came to my house and she wrote off everything. So I went to Charleston and one of the girls that is in our little group, our little couple group, she um, is a discount coach under me. And the other girl is a client under me. Hmm. I wrote off, I wrote off everything. Our Uber rides, I paid for them and they just Venmoed me. I wrote off our Uber rides. I wrote off our Airbnb. I wrote off our dinners that we went at, like yep. all of it. Be and even though Ricky is not a coach under me, we, if we would go out to dinner, he had purchased like the ultimate reset from me and things like that. I would write, I didn't write off every dinner cause that's not okay. There are date nights and you can't write them all off, right. but there are some dinners that yes, I absolutely wrote off because I was like, we're doing ultimate reset together. He's a client. I deserve to do this. So I would put it on that card. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tried, like I, Chrissy and I went out for the day a couple months back and we went out for lunch and dinner and I claimed both of those. Did I claim the massage that we got? No. Oh, absolutely. Can you really? Oh yes. So yesterday I treated me and my girlfriend, Sarah, who is a discount coach under me. And my girlfriend, Leslie, who is a customer under me, to massages. All three of us got massages yesterday. Absolutely. It's a tax write-off. I used my Beachbody credit card. See, I wouldn't, I would have thought definitely the eating, but I never would have. It's an experience. So if I met up with them at the zoo, I would pay for our zoo tickets with my... true. Yeah. Hmm. Learn something every year. I'm telling you. I mean, I I believe I'm telling you the truth. I don't I don't know. But I mean, worst comes to worst, as long as you have someone doing it for you, they'll, yeah, tell, they'll you. tell you they'll tell you you're wrong. I mean you're like you can't claim this and then right. you just go off. Yeah. <laughs> it's better to have more than not enough. <laughs> but in and in our field, a massage is like we're a fitness we're a fitness coach. That's true. So a massage is probably monthly maintenance, honestly. That's true. Like you could probably get a massage every month and write it off. Yeah. A lot yeah. of insurance companies even let you get massages each month. I mean, it's just the way it is. Interesting. But 